Today we're going to be talking about how to use Theorem of Pappas to find the volume of a right circular cone with radius r and height h. In case you're not familiar with it, the Theorem of Pappas tells us that the volume of an object like this one is equal to the area of one of its plane regions or a, a cross section of the object times the distance traveled by the centroid of the plane region. So a little confusing at first, but basically what we need to do is draw the figure we need to find a cross section or, or sketch a cross section, identify its area, and then the distance traveled by the centroid of the plane region. Well, if we start unpacking this formula, what we realize is that in order to find the distance traveled by the centroid of the plane region, we need a formula for distance. The distance formula is actually 2 pi times the x coordinate of the centroid of the plane region. 2 pi because we're going to be revolving the centroid around the y-axis. So we have 2 pi and then we have the x-coordinate of the centroid of the plane region. Well, if we need the x-coordinate of the centroid of the plane region, we're going to need a formula for that. And that's this one right here that gives us the x-coordinate of the centroid. So we're going to need to unpack this formula. We also have the y-coordinate of the centroid in case we need it. But in order to find this formula, we're going to need area, which we'll get later, and a formula for f of x. Well, we don't have f of x right now, so we're actually going to be using the point-slope form of the equation of the line to find an equation for f of x. So we're going to be working backwards here a little bit. But the first thing we need to do is draw a picture of what we're talking about. So the easiest way to do a problem like this is to imagine that our figure is positioned with its base at the origin. So depending on what the problem is and what kind of figure you have, sometimes it's helpful to position the center of the object, like in the case of a sphere, the center of the object at the origin. In our case, it's helpful to position the base, the center of the base of the cone at the origin. So we have the base of the cone here, and essentially what we're saying is that the center of its base is at the origin, so we'll draw the we'll draw the base here and then the cone is gonna come up and the top of it here be centered at the y-axis so we have a cone roughly like this and what we've been told in the problem is that the height of the cone so the distance from the top here to the center of the bottom the height of the cone is h and that the radius of the cone this distance here is r so that's all we know, but because we've positioned it at the origin, we also know various points along this cone. So the center of the bottom here at the origin, we know that that point is at 0, 0. We know that this point here is at r0 because since the radius is r, we go out a distance of r along the x-axis, but we're still at the x-axis, so we have r, comma, zero and then this point up here we go up a distance of h the height along the y-axis but we're still right on the y-axis so the x-coordinate is zero the y-coordinate is h so we have those three points and they define the right triangle that lies here in the plane region not the whole cone itself but just this right triangle here and that's perfect because what we really want is the area of this right triangle and the distance traveled by the centroid of this right triangle. So once we find area of this triangle and distance traveled by its centroid, then we can use those two pieces of information to get volume of the entire cone. So now clearly we need to find area and finding area is really easy. It's just the area of a triangle and you'll remember that the area of a triangle is basically base times height divided by two because we're finding half the area of a rectangle. So area will just be h times r divided by two. So h r over two. That's gonna give us the area of this triangle. Height times width divided by two is our area. Now we need to find distance. Well, we can't find distance because we have our formula here for distance until we find the x value of the centroid of our plane region. So if we go back to this formula here for the x value, we already have a value for a, for area, and we know that a and b are going to be the limits of integration here, 0 to r, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but we don't have f of x. We need a formula for f of x. 
And essentially what we need to find here for f of x, we need to find the equation of this line right here. Because when it comes to our triangle, this line, the, the equation for this line, this function, is the one that encloses the area underneath it between the line and the x-axis. So we want to find that equation. And the way that we'll do that is by using our two points 0h and r0 in the point slope form for the equation of the line. We'll say for the equation of the line here, uh, let's pretend that this point here, 0h, is x sub 1, y sub 1. So this will be x sub 1, y sub 1. In our point slope form for the equation of the line, we'll get y minus y sub 1, which we know is h, is equal to, and we'll leave m for a second, m times x minus x sub 1, which we know is 0. Okay, so we plugged in our point. Now we need to find an equation for m. Remember, m is the slope, and in order to find it, we need to use both of our points here. So what we'll do, y minus h equals, to get m, we subtract one y coordinate from the other, so we'll do h minus 0, h minus 0, divided by the x coordinate minus the other, so 0 minus r, 0 minus r, and it's important that we subtract one point from the other, so because we said h minus 0, we have to say 0 minus r as opposed to r minus 0 the opposite way. So h minus 0 over 0 minus r times, we'll just say x because we have a minus 0 here, so that's fine. So now when we simplify this, we get y minus h is equal to h over negative r times x. If we convert this into y-intercept form by adding h to both sides, we'll get y equals negative h over r times x plus h. And this is going to be our function f of x, so let's go ahead and call it that. Let's say that f of x is going to be equal to negative h over r times x plus h. So now that we have f of x, we can go ahead and find the x-coordinate of the centroid. So the x-coordinate of the centroid is equal to 1 divided by area. Well, we already calculated area as hr over 2. When we take 1 divided by area, it's just going to give us the reciprocal of our area here because we have 1 divided by a fraction, so it's going to flip the fraction. And instead of 1 over area, we'll just get 2 over hr, the reciprocal of area there. Then we have times the integral from a to b. And as we talked about earlier, we're looking for this triangle here, the one bounded by the line we just found, f of x, and these lines here. So we're looking for the area of this triangle, and its leftmost point is here at the origin, which has an x-coordinate of 0, and its rightmost point is right here, which has an x-coordinate of r. So our limits of integration are 0 to r. And then we have x here, which is part of our formula, times f of x. Well, if we multiply this times f of x, we get negative hrx plus h, and then dx here. Now we want to simplify this integral and then go ahead and integrate it. So 0 to r, we'll get negative h over r times x squared plus h times x dx. We can factor out an h, so we'll get x equals 2. Now if we factor out an h, we're going to have an h in the numerator, and that's going to cancel with the h here in the denominator, so we'll just end up with 2 over r from times the integral from 0 to r of negative 1 over r times x squared plus x dx. Now if we integrate, we'll get x equals 2 over r times, now if we, if we take the integral here term by term, we'll add 1 to the exponent to get x cubed, so x cubed, but then we have to divide by 3, so we'll get negative 1 over 3r, and then when we add 1 to the exponent here for x, we'll get x squared dividing by the new exponent 2, we get 1 half x squared, and we're going to be evaluating that on the interval 0 to r, so 0 to r. Now when we evaluated our limits of integration here, we'll plug in r first. We always plug in our top number first. So what we'll get there, we'll plug it in for x. We'll get 1 over negative 3r times r cubed plus 1 half times r squared. 
and then when we plug in, we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in zero, but when we plug in zero for x, we're just gonna get zero here and zero here, so there's no point in, in writing out those terms. So what we're left with here now is two over r times one over negative three, but then we have an r in the denominator and an r cubed in the numerator, which will leave us with just an r squared in the numerator, and then we have plus one half r squared here. Now we'll multiply the 2r through here and we'll get equals 2 over negative 3, an r in the denominator and an r squared in the numerator just gives us an r in the numerator and then we have our 2 in the numerator and denominator which will cancel with one another, an r in the denominator and an r squared in the numerator which will just leave us with an r in the numerator. So essentially what we have now is we have 1r, which is 3 over 3r, minus 2 over 3r, which is equal to 1 over 3r, or r over 3, and that's the x-coordinate of the centroid in this plane region. We could find the y-coordinate if we wanted to, but in this case we don't need to because all we need is the x-coordinate for our distance formula. So let's go ahead and write up here that the x-coordinate is equal to r over 3. Now that we have our x coordinate, we can calculate distance. We'll get distance equals 2 pi times r over 3, which obviously gives us 2 pi r over 3. That's distance. When we come back here to our volume formula, which is what we wanted to solve for in the first place, we just need area and distance, and we now have both of those. So we'll get volume equals area, which we have as hr over 2 times distance, which we now have as 2 pi r over 3. So we'll get volume equals 2 pi r squared h all over 6. When we reduce the fraction, we'll just get pi r squared h over 3. And that, in fact, is the volume of this cone, which again we found by multiplying the area of this triangle by the distance traveled by the centroid of this plane region. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.